Hello, good evening everyone. Welcome to the masterclass 3 of our introduction to cyber security learning cohort. So uh, we'll just wait for a couple of more minutes to, you know, we will just uh, wait for more participants to join in and then we'll begin in another two minutes. Good evening, everyone. Please bear with us. We are just waiting for a couple of more, min uh, more minutes. Uh, we will allow a few more people to join in and then we will start. Thank you, Mr. Hi everyone. We're just waiting for a couple of more minutes for others to join. We have Karthik, uh, who is uh, whom you are very well aware of, who's been assisting you with the sessions. 
So, so Karthik, uh, shall we start because we are already a little late today, and uh, I think this is our third chapter, Karthik. Or yes, ma'am, it's the third one. So after this, uh, the next chapter, and we will be done, and then you will be helping yeah. us with uh, giving people okay. a certification support. So fine. Yes. Uh, uh, whoever has joined uh, today, I think uh, to just you know uh, value their time, we'll start. Okay, sure. Thank so, you, uh, yeah. So again, welcome all and good evening all from my side, from NID Foundation to all of you. We are here as for the master class three that we'll be conducting at for the chapter number three of our introduction to cybersecurity course. So uh, I'm just sharing my slide. Okay. So I hope that everyone is able to see my slide. Please, uh, can anyone confirm? It is visible, Karthik. Yeah. Okay, thanks. So today we'll start with our chapter number three, protecting our data and privacy. Give you a summary of the brief introduction, like what we discussed in the previous sessions, because it has been a gap in previous and today's classes. So. In the last sessions, we learned what cybersecurity was. We learned what different types of threats there were, the different types of attackers, and the different types of attacks using malware, using uh, uh, using malware and using phishing attacks, using denial of service attacks. There were many different types of threats and attacks we talked about. Now we will move on with that, with the protection side of cybersecurity. Like, what can we do? to protect our data and privacy at a very basic and personal level. Any individual can do these steps and should do these steps to make sure that our personal information that we learned about in chapter number one should be protected. So we'll start this chapter with the topic of protecting our data first. Now we'll first discuss how to protect our data. So. When we talk about personal data to protect our personal data, we have to protect the devices that it will be stored on, right? To protect our data, we have to protect the devices like our mobile device, our laptop device, our lap tablets, computers, servers, whatever. We have to protect the devices that we our data is stored on. That way, our data will be protected. So to protect these devices, there are many steps and many solutions available to us. First being, we can always keep our firewall on. Many of you might know what a firewall is, but those who don't know, firewall is a deeply, you can say, component that is already embedded in your Windows systems. If you are using Windows laptops or computer systems, it is a component that is inbuilt inside your operating systems. Even if you use a Wi-Fi router or any other devices, that firewall is also available in, incorporated inside of them as well. That firewall has the ability to protect your devices from any kind of unauthorized access from the internet, or if any data is coming from the internet to your devices, it will block that. And if your data is going from your computer to the internet, like some attacker is stealing it, it will block that as well. Any kind of unauthorized access will be stopped with the help of firewall. The main thing we have to do is making sure that this firewall is always up to date and it is always on because as you might remember in the last uh, last master class we talked about some kind of malwares that was a bot malware a bot malware has the ability to make sure that without your knowledge some kind of action some kind of specific action that any attacker wants can be done with the use of a bot malware so an attacker might install a bot malware in the attachment that you are downloading that can turn off the firewall in the background without even your knowledge. So we have to make sure that this firewall of ours is always on, on and up to date. We can always check this firewall option if it is on or not by going into our control panel. So if you see my system right now, I am opening up my uh, start menu right here. I am using Windows 11. You can take this example. So after opening the start menu, I will just type control panel in the start search bar. And you can see I can open it right here. In the control panel, as you can see in my control panel, at the bottom of it, there is a Windows Defender firewall. We can click on it. 
and you can see that my firewall is right now on on it is protecting me from all unauthorized access coming from the internet if by some cases your firewall is off then you can go right here there is an option turn windows defender firewall on or off and you can go to turn it on again so that's the first step you can say the first boundary of protection we have that we are, our firewall should always be on on to protect any kind of unauthorized access from our system then we should make sure that our computer has a very well authorized uh, anti malware solution on in, installed on it right because there are malwares around the attacker has the first opportunity to attack with a malware we should make sure that our devices have an anti malware because these are specially created softwares these anti malware these are specially created softwares that has have the ability to scan your computer and automatically detect any kind of malware if it is enters your system like in your pen drive or your link any kind of malware any time your malware is inserted into the computer it automatically detects the malware and captures that link or the software or the icon that contains the malware and stops its access so that whenever you try to double click the file whenever you try to open up the file that contains the malware you it will not be opening because the anti malware has blocked it it has captured the malware and kept it in a cage you can say so our job is that we should always install an anti malware on our system there are many third party anti malwares available in our industry such as you might have heard about quick heal anti malwares macfi norton casper sky these are very well and good purchasable anti malwares that you can purchase from online services or you can go to any kind of industry market and you can get anti malwares from there as well but if you are looking for a free version as my sometimes are my students ask me that uh, sir can we install any there are any free versions available because we can't afford such uh, uh, expensive anti malwares and such so yes we have also as if you are keeping updating your computer in the windows 11 and windows 10 versions there is a, a utility name windows security if you see my start menu i am typing windows security this in the previous versions of windows was called windows defender but in windows 10 and windows 11 it is a very good embedded inbuilt anti malware for your entire system that protects your computers from all viruses spyware ransomware and such so if you want a very good free version of an anti malware you have it in your windows 11 the one job is to make sure that is it is up to date because that comes up to the third point of our protection computer devices that is we have to make sure our operating systems and browsers are up to date and organized many time in my experience we have seen that uh, many systems that are being slowed down that many systems have a hanging problem is due to the fact that many times people don't organize their files and folders we have seen desktops filled with icons and folders we have seen the c c drive that is the component that which in the that which the windows is installed so if that folder that c drive is filled up to the brink that's why your computer slows down it starts hanging up so we have to make sure that these drives are empty we are data our files and folders are organized in such a way that computer doesn't have the issue of storing up all this bulk information here and there right and we have to make sure our devices or even if it is an android device you are using a mobile phone or your laptops or anywhere it is up to date because at the end what is happening these are software these are application software operating system these are programs created by human mind and being human is to create some errors being a is a human right so there might be some kind of bugs there might be some kind of software flaws vulnerabilities inside of a software a company or an organization what does they do for these flaws and bugs they keep releasing update patches security patches for that so our job is to make sure we install these updates and security patches which sometimes people don't do to save their mobile data to save their internet data that should not be happening 
So if you keep all of your softwares and operating systems to the brink of an updates, no issues will be happening inside your devices. Then lastly, we have to make sure our devices are password protected. I have seen in my experience, many children or many elderly people in our households don't protect their mobile devices or laptop devices with a password because in their language, in their words itself, they say that, I am, do not have the time to keep repeating, entering my password again and again, and I don't even remember sometimes. So that should not be the case. Every device should have a password protection system because what does password protection does is it provides you, a, your device, a layer of security, which is called encryption. Encryption is a, pro, you can say concept that uses that password to transform your data into something we call in the IT industry is ciphertext. So that our data, that zero and one, our data that is stored in the digital format in our devices becomes unreadable to any attacker. If that attacker is not able to crack our password or not able to access our device, he tries to steal that information. And in order to do so, he won't be able to read our data because we have encrypted our devices, right? So that is the last part. Always keep your passwords, uh, devices, password protected, be either it a laptop or a mobile device. Then we come to protecting our networks, right? To protect our network because our devices are now protected. We have implemented passwords. We have implemented firewalls, anti malwares. Our devices are protected. Now the only threat we have is that an attacker is coming from the network. So we should also protect our networks as well. Because nowadays, everyone is using Wi-Fi services as well. There are many broadband services where at a very cheaper cost. And there are many high profile 5G internet services such as Geo Fiber, ATL Extreme Fiber, Excital Fiber. There are many kinds of services that are available right now. For, uh, for normal people users and even in organizations. So we have to make sure that these Wi-Fi connections that we create, the Wi-Fi network, private network that we create is protected from any unauthorized attacker. And for that, we can implement certain, uh, you can say steps for that. First and foremost, we have to change our preset SSIDs. Now, what is an SSID? SSID is for service set identifier. These are your Wi-Fi names in the sense. If I let you take, uh, if I just give me a second, I'm opening up my Wi-Fi settings to show you what an SSID is if in one. If you search your Wi-Fi name, like in your mobile phone or in your laptop, you might see that there are many Wi-Fi names that are available to us in your locality, such as in my locality, there are many Wi-Fi available to me. So these are my SSIDs, these names, right? So whenever we implement a new Wi-Fi connection in our home, such as if you buy a new connection from GeoFiber, the technician will come to your house, he will implement, install a new router, and he will just give you a default company name as your SSID. For example, when I ins installed my GeoFiber, it gave me the SSID, he gave me the SSID, GeoFiber underscore my registered phone number. Now my phone number is now being broadcasted all over my locality. That should not be the case because my personal phone number is now leaking to everyone. So our first job is to, to uh, change my SSID so that only I, my, I can control what my network should display or not, right? Second step is to change the default administrative password. This is a very easy leak. So where many students even, control, take control of your Wi-Fi situation in your homes or in a company or an institution where the default administrative password is not changed. What is the default administrative password? Let me show you again. See, to access a router, a router, a Wi-Fi router has its own operating system where many configurations are done, such as uh, inserting a new SSID, creating a new password for your Wi-Fi creating an administrative password, more and more many IP addressing configuration. There can be many con things configured in your Wi-Fi router. But in order to do that, we have to access your router. How to do access your router? 
every route, Wi-Fi router has an IP address. So to access your router, you can just go to your any web browser such as Google Chrome, Opera, Mozilla, Firefox, whatever web browser you want. You can just type your white router's IP address such as am I typing mine and you can see it opens my Excital router for me. Now it asks me for a username and password. This is not the Wi-Fi username and password. Wi-Fi name is called SSID, not the username. So in every router in the whole world, no matter what company it is created, be, the, be it is Intel, ITEL, IBM, uh, D-Link, Geo, Airtel, Huawei, there are many companies available, but each and every company and each and every router has the same default administrator username and password, right? Which is, you can let me, uh, 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 everyone knows it. Some people in my our chat box might know it and some not know it, right? But if you search on Google, you might know it. Yes, many people are writing in the chat box. Exactly. The username is admin and the password is also so easy. Admin itself, all in small letters, right? That is the most default thing every router does. So the first step we have to do is we have to change this password. For security purposes, I already have changed my security password. So I am now logging in with that. And you can see I can go into my admin uh, option and I can change my security password. This is the first step that we can take to protect our Wi-Fi configuration, to change our administrative password, then change your SSIDs, then change your, I can change, go to security and WLAN, I can create a new password for my Wi-Fi. And the more advanced you wanna go, you can go such as in some companies, many companies, what they do is they implement a security called Mac filtering. This Mac filtering allows you any organization or in your in our homes as well. You can implement it in our in your homes where you can create a whitelist or a backlist based on the type of action you want to do. Like if I create a whitelist, only people I allow will be able to connect to my Wi-Fi. No one else can connect to my Wi-Fi. Even if they know the password to my Wi-Fi, they won't be able to connect to it unless or until I know their MAC address. So you can implement MAC filtering as well. This is what we teach in, you can say, high level networking courses for students and such. But if you want, you can do that to learn that stuff. But it is also a very highly security measure to create in your Wi-Fi protection. So that way, our Wi-Fi network is more secure. If our Wi-Fi network is secure, then all the devices that we connect to it, such as our laptops, mobile devices, even nowadays we connect our smart home devices such as Google Home, Alexa, and smart bulbs and such to our Wi-Fi. They are protected, right? So that is the home wireless network are protected now. Now, there are some places, there are cities now, you can say the benefit of our current government is that today there are many cities and places that provide us the free internet services. There are Wi-Fi routers available at localities and cities that provide free internet services in our homes. Now, how to protect that? Because we cannot configure them. We can configure our own personal Wi-Fi, but we cannot configure the free internet, the governmental routers and such. So how to protect against that? There is a slight method that many people use that is called a VPN service. Now, many people know about VPN. It is called a virtual private network. And many people use VPN in their mobile devices, in their web browsers and such. What does VPN do? It is some kind of, if, if anyone, I, I, if I ask any student or anyone here, that what VPN is, they will say that, sir, it is a technique that allows us to hide our own IP addresses. Yes, it does. And many times students only use VPN to go to uh, play games, to access some websites that are banned in India or such and such. So yes, VPN can be used such a, you can say a workaround like that, but the main objective of creating a technology VPN was that through the use of VPN, you can use proxy servers. As a proxy server, what we can do is like, 
many rich people have their own servants and butlers right exactly that purpose you are not doing the work yourself your device is not doing the work yourself you are telling someone else to do the work for you right if you want to access some websites if you want to access any device instead of sending the request from your own device you connect create a private encrypted channel to any other server in the another country such as singapore and then your request will then go from that singapore server to the destination instead of going directly from your device your request will go first to the singapore server then to the other server what does that benefit give us is that that when the destination server suppose youtube.com tracks you back like which ip address is requesting my service then it does not uh, you can say capture your ip address or your location it captures the ip address and location of the proxy server in you can say indirectly what is happening is my location and my ip address is hidden and every time whenever i want to access any routers or any systems or any wifi device or any websites the request will go from that server that is the benefit of vpn because in a public network whenever we connect to a public wifi router where where free internet services are available to us what happens is 100 or 200 people are connected around you right like at a train station where wifi service is available you are not the only one that is connecting there are 100 200 people around you that are connected to the same wifi nobody knows nobody has any idea if an attacker is also among the 100 people around them so an attacker can take advantage of the situation and backtrack your device your ip address and mac address through that connection of the wifi so that is why we have the option of securing this network by the use of vpn always whenever you are connected to a public network use a vpn services there are very much uh, very various apps available through the play store but there are some trusted models i don't trust all of them if you want my recommendation there are express vpn services nord vpn services and proton vpn services that i personally use for my if if you want my recommendation you can use those apps as well then lastly many times that if you are not using any bluetooth services or wifi services or gps services in your device you should always turn them off because if you are not connected to any device your own device doesn't have the password protection for your bluetooth gps and wifi right if your mobile device is not connected to any bluetooth service your wifi device is not connected to any wifi if your gps is just turning on automatically then these three devices are broadcasting your wi you, you can say your mobile location everywhere without the protection of any wifi so that gives an attacker a very useful opportunity to connect to your device so make sure that whenever you are not using your wireless device services turn them off so that's how we can protect our networks then we have the opportunity that many times we create many digital accounts in our lifetimes right every participant here has a facebook account at least a facebook account a twitter account might be there might be an instagram account gmail accounts is a must everyone will have a gmail account so they, we create many email accounts or online accounts for ourselves in our lives but many times almost 70 to 80% times people what they do is they create the same password for each of the accounts either it is your bank account your gmail account every password will be the same all accounts will have the same password that is a very bad practice to follow because if an attacker cracks one password he now has access to all of your accounts so you we should always use unique password for each online account and what types of password we should use we should always use complicated passwords many time people uh, 
use passwords that are very easy to guess. They think that I will forget my own password, so I will choose some password that that will be easy to remember. But that technique also goes for the for the attacker as well. If you are choosing an easy password for you to remember yourself, then an attacker has the same easier target for you to crack that password. So we should always create a very complicated password. If you want to create an easy remembering but complex password, you can take the example of the figure that I'm showing you right now. See, the password is same for all three categories. FB login, one FB login, one dot FB dot login. But the last option, the better one is using capital letters, small letters, symbols, and such and such, numbers and such. That creates a very complicated password for an attacker to crack down. See, let me give you a very good ex example. Currently, in our very advanced cybersecurity classes that we run for students in our cybersecurity, you can say ethical hacking courses, there is a software that we employ to teach the students how to crack the passwords. And in that software that attackers also use, that software takes at least uh, five minutes, or you can say five to 10 seconds for a two letter password. If your account or folder or any kind of account has a two letter password, it, it can be guessed, it can be cracked within five seconds. Now we have checked that a software or a program to guess the password for a five letter password, it takes like 30 minutes to one hour. So as you might guess where I'm going, many of the accounts in the uh, Gmail or wherever, you might see that every type of digital account, you are recommended to use the password more than eight characters. Why do we do that? Because because th those software, those password cracking softwares will take days, weeks, months to crack that password because that eight letter password, if it is complicated, might not even be crackable with those programs and those scripts. Right? So it is a very good practice to follow to create a password that is very long, very complicated and using complex letters. And Many times it is very also recommended that you use a passphrase rather than a password, right? Because even in Gmail accounts or in NetAdvisor accounts or Facebook accounts, when you create an account, there is this line. If you see my, uh, if you see in my slide, this is the line I'm talking about. Many times when you are creating an account, you see when you're creating a password, this line is there that the password should be no more than, uh, not less than eight characters. But many times people only focus on this eight characters and forget about this. People always think that, oh, I can, uh, I have to create a password more than eight characters, then they will choose a password like 10 characters, 11 characters, who will create a password for 20, 35? You have a limit of 64 characters. Nobody is asking you to think of a word that is longer, but you can always use sentences. For your YouTube account, we can create a password like, I love my YouTube account, I love watching videos. These two sentences mixed together, use of numbers, symbols, capital letters, will be the strongest password anyone could have used in the world, you can say. So that is a very good practice for you to follow that use a passphrase rather than password for all of your accounts. Every account will be unique and it will be most secure passwords that anyone will be able to guess. Uncrackable, you can say. So that is a good follow. Then, for regarding to protect your data, there is a process where you can use that is called encrypting your data. As uh, suggested earlier by me, I told you that previously that what passwords do is that passwords have the ability to convert your text into ciphertext by using encryption. Now, that is a very global concept that we have protected our computer with a password. What would happen if we protect, enable, Passwords create one layer of security. What we, what would happen if we create another layer of security inside of it? 
that is encryption so for encryption purposes let me give you two examples that you can do to protect your files in a windows computer okay the first one is through the use of ms office itself in ms office many people don't know but what you can do is you can protect your either your powerpoint slides excel files document files whatever you can protect your ms office files with a password you can encrypt them how just go to your file menu and then go to info tab here and inside info you will see that there is an option of protect presentation then you can click on encrypt with password and you can type in any password you like i have now entered my password and i will then save this file and when i open this file again in the future it will always ask me for a password even if i send this file to my students to my colleagues wherever i will send this file even upload it on the cloud it will always be encrypted with a password no one will be able to read it unless or until i enter the correct password if you want to remove the password you can go through the same process but this time instead of writing a password leave it blank and the password will be removed that is the first step you can do this with the help of, in your excel files word files powerpoint files whatever files you want in your ms office yes uh, as in the chat box someone has written but if you forget this password it won't be recovery that is a very good so you can say step but it also protects your files okay so yes we have to make sure that our files are password protected and we write down this password in any hard copy or any kind of notebook don't keep your passwords written in any kind of digital format but you can keep it written in your notebooks or your journals or diaries and such that way you will be able to remember your password but it is a very good you can say protection feature that we have the second one is in uh, that the second one we have is embedded in our windows enterprise ultimate and professional versions you won't find this word uh, solution in windows home versions okay if you have windows 10 or 11 home that you won't be able to use this feature but if you have windows 10 or 11 professional ultimate or enterprise versions you will be able to see that where if i click on a right click on any file for example i want to encrypt this file i i can right click on it go to properties and in then in the general tab there is an advanced option right here inside advanced there is an option to encrypt the contents to secure data if i check mark this option and click okay and then okay again it will just warn me that if i only want to encrypt this file or encrypt the entire parent folder just for the showing purposes i am encrypting one file only so i am encrypting this file and as you can see by the icon now this file has a golden lock on top of it this represent that this file is now encrypted with the password protection digital security certificate of my user account i right. my user account currently is kb so this file is now protected with my digital certificate of this user account in this computer if i open up this file see if i want to open up this file no password will be asked nothing will happen and i will be able to open up this file not no problem issue okay but suppose i left my computer on like this my brother comes into my room and inserts a pen drive and copies all of my data and takes it to my his computer if he tries to open up this file on his computer he won't be able to i can guarantee you that you can check it in your own computer nobody will be able to open up this file this file will is only accessible now in my computers my user account even if there is another user account on my computer for example if in this computer if there is a user account of my mother or any other family member if he tries to open up this file from their user account they won't be able to 
only my user account and my computer will be open up able to open up this this is a very good uh, you can say encryption procedure but the same goes if my user account goes down if my windows crashes or my user account is disabled or deleted this file will be unopenable to anyone not even me right so make sure that yes these are very good encryption techniques but make sure you are not using them here and there like this you are also using precautions like backing up your password key security key and such and such so this is a very good pro uh, encryption procedure you can use to protect all of your encrypt all of your data because what happens is that we need some kind of assurance like and nobody can give you 100% guarantee i am not able to give you 100% guarantee that yes use these techniques nobody will be able to hack into your computer there is no such thing as a 100% security okay but i can give you such insurances that even if that attacker is more advanced than me somehow and he attacks your computers and he steals all of your information that information is useless to him because he won't be able to read that data open that file or nothing that is totally garbage for him so this encryption provides you this kind of assurance then we have to make sure our data is backups before encrypting any of your data in your devices make sure that all of that data is also copied into another location in your external hard drive pen drive google drive if you are using online services online cloud services aws google wherever so make sure that all of your important data is having a backup copied onto another location so that in the event of a data loss windows crashes or your devices your files become inaccessible then your data will be recoverable from somewhere else right so make sure your data is backup is protected somewhere else copied somewhere else as well then we lastly come to safeguarding our privacy now there are some services that are available to us online or offline that we many organizations and many people also use for protection of their own privacy for their own accounts for their own personal data data stored online so for that purpose many organization use two factor authentication such as using a credit card atm card phone or fob or your biometric services such as fingerprint palm services voice recognition in spite of using a password they use this secondary technique as well like in your atm machines right atm machines have a two factor authentication you insert your atm card first level of security then you enter a pin code as well second level of security many organizations such as uh, i have um, let me give you another real life example my brother works in infosys so in that uh, organization Uh, what they have done is that they provided him with us uh, you can say this security fob that you see in this figure here in this hand to log into the company system they, he has to enter the username and password and after even after that that security fob contains some digital codes inside of it that he has to enter and that digital codes code is changed every minute every minute that code is changed so that nobody will be able to access his computer based on the previous information if somebody gets uh, you can say uh, access to this code that code will no longer be available within the next minute so there are many techniques available for this two factor authentication we should always use services that provide us some kind of another authentication services as well many online websites such as google gmail youtube facebook these kinds of web online services employ these kind of two factor authentication services where after a, uh, logging in with your passwords they uh, sent an otp to your mobile phone or your email id to confirm uh, your identity that that way your privacy is secured then there is another protocol for authentication that is used by many online services that is an open standard protocol called oauth 
This is called open authorization services, where many websites, instead of creating user accounts on their own servers, they, you can say, middleman that information. For example, I want, I have uh, gone on to newer website or, and they are asking me that to access their services, I have to create an account on their website. But I don't want to create an account on that uh, website. I'm only there for the first time. I don't want them to have my personal information, my address, my email address, my phone number and such and such. But those websites have the ability that, yes, okay, if you don't want to create an account on my server, I have Google as a client. I have Facebook as a client. You can employ, uh, you can log just give me permission from your Google account or Facebook account so that I can verify that this is, you are a human person. You are not some kind of malware or bot created by an attacker that is trying to access myself. So you can also implement such kind of securities. Many organizations employ that kind of security and you can trust these kinds of services. So many times if you have a doubt in your mind that this, serv this website is asking Google to click OK on it, then you can trust them because what they are doing is they are just implementing Google and Facebook for their own security purposes. But yes, they uh, ask Google or Facebook to be the bindle man. So that is the security. Issue. Then lastly, as you might have heard this many times in your life, and you also might be uh, spreading this kind of awareness among many people is never to share as or all of your never share all of your information on social media share as little as information as possible because many times what student and children do is that all of their history from their uh, second class from their kindergarten all of their information is stored on facebook and twitter and instagram that way when they get, go on to create their bank accounts their internet banking ids there is a security question that they have to fill, such as what is your mother's maiden name? Where, what is your pet's name? These kinds of security questions are there in case they forget their password. So an attacker can just click on the link, forgot password, and by the use of this information that you have already shared publicly online, gain access to your accounts. So always create, uh, make sure that your online accounts have not shared such kind of information and if you are using sharing this information only share it with the your family and friends you can access your privacy settings on your online accounts and set it to your friends and family private not public that way you can be assured of your security lastly we have email and web browser privacy many times what happens is you might have heard that there is a term we use in our web browsers called cookies. Many people might have heard about this term called cookies, but many people might not know what cookies are. So see, cookies are a special component in your web browser that collect all of your browsing history, like what kind of websites you visit, what are your interests in your mobile phone searches or your whatever, like what usernames and passwords you are entering, what if you are filling out a form, what is your addresses, phone numbers, gender details, and such and such. All of this information is collected by the web browsers. Why? Because of your benefit. Now, for example, you are searching mobile phones on Amazon. And then if you go on to Facebook, you will see that all of your advertisements on Facebook page are now related to new mobile phones. So that is the, uh, you can say, benefit of cookie. Sorry for that. I, might, I muted myself for accident. So that is the, you can say, benefit of cookies. That we have now, uh, you can say, artificial intelligence in our browser that collect our information for us to provide us, you can say, interested topics, interested advertisements. Whenever I enter a new form, enter my details in a new form, all of my details are automatically added so that I don't have to type it again and again. That is the benefit of cookies. Now, this is a benefit in my computer, but if I'm accessing someone else's computer, if I'm just using my friend's mobile phone 
or if I am uh, going to a cyber cafe, I don't want their computer's cookies to collect my information, right? So for that purposes, each and every browser is equipped with a mode we call the incognito function. Every browser has an incognito, in private, private window, private browsing function. Each browser has their own names, you can say. So for example, in I use an Opera browser and in my Opera browser, I have a function that, that is called the private window. If I open up this private window, it will display me that in this window right now, wherever I go, whatever win websites I browse, whatever I do, I can do it freely because my cookies are now disabled. In this window, nothing I do will be stored. Nothing I do will be collected by the browser. It will all be deleted as soon as I click on this cross button. That's it. So my data has now been, all my cookies have now been deleted when that window was closed. I, if, if I do anything browsing on this window, my cookies will be collected. But if I employ new private window, my data, my cookies will be disabled. That way, my privacy will be secure. So whenever we go to a cyber cafe or access any, an, anyone else's web browsers, always try to use incognito mode so that your privacy is secured. Right. With that, today, our chapter number three of our, you can say, in introduction to cyber city, six security has now ended where we learned many kinds of basic techniques that any individual can employ, not just an organizational employee, anyone in your households or if you are using your personal devices, if you are even working on uh, corporations, computers and such. You can employ these techniques so that your devices, your data, your personal data networks are protected from outside threats. Right. And with that, the chapter three concluded. And in the next class, we will continue on with this with chapter number four, where we will learn how to protect ourselves from organizational threats, like what organizations does, what type of technologies and securities they employ, implement so that their data, their organizational data is protected. So with that, I end, uh, you can say today's session. And if now we move on to the queries round, if anyone has uh, queries regarding this topic today, we learned, feel free to ask in the chat box and I will answer it. So uh, what is your pa opinion on password manager? Do you recommend any? See, uh, my opinion on password manager is not that good, uh, Gorang, because I am not recommending you any. I recommend that if you are use, if you are storing some passwords on any kind of digital format, that is not safe at all. That's why I advise that if you are want to store or safeguard any password information, do it on a hard copy, such as diaries and journals and such. Because any kind of digital format is hackable, is kind of, you can say, uh, treated as not secure, but a hard copy of pen and paper is not that hackable, right? That is can That can be kept safe by you. So my opinion of password managers is not that high because I have seen there are many cases in the past that these password managers have been hacked and uh, data has been leaked for many kind of banks such as. Can you talk us some info about the SIM swap attack? So that kind of attack is used by atta uh, attackers where many kind of attackers use many kind of different SIM card numbers to uh, scam or fraud call you. That can be also, that is a very, you can say, larger threat that we have nowadays because in that way we cannot block your attacker, the scammer. He will only just swap their SIM card then. Uh, call you from a different number. That is a very big challenge that we face nowadays to how to find out if, they, if that attacker has SIM swapped or not. So 
that is a challenge you can say it is in progress that is how do we fight these kinds of technologies and how do we fight this kind of threat shailendra you are asking how to get our router ip so that is a very also good question to uh, find out your router ip there is a first you, uh, trick you can do is every router has a sticker on the back uh, you can say back of it where it displays your router ip or if you want to find out your router router id from your computer you can uh, type windows r in your keyboard okay if you type windows r this utility will open this is called a run and inside of it type cmd and click okay then your command prompt will open up like this and inside of it you can type one single command that is called ip config ip c o n f i g this command when you enter it it will display your ip address in details of your networking devices and whatever device is connected to the network to the router such as my wifi is now connected we need to learn these details and this ip address the default gateway this is my router's ip address okay so this is my devices my laptop's ip address and the default gateway will always be the wifi router's ip address so this is how you can get your router ip we need to log out the applications like gmail facebook or some online applications or can we keep it log in in our device so for applications such as gmail facebook and online applications uh, it is safe as long as you password protect also if you are, you can do both things you can log out your applications if you want but if you want to keep them log in there is a feature that is enabled that can be enabled in android devices you can just go into settings and there is a feature that you can do use such as app lock you can app lock those applications that you want to keep your ids logged in for permanently right you can app lock gmail facebook or whatsapp and such so that if you want, i want to uh, always log in my application i can use app lock for that recently we heard that bank account can be hacked just by a call they don't ask for any otp how is that possible how can we a uh, bank account cannot just be hacked by a call okay this is uh, you can say partly wrong information that you might have heard how because what bank account does is uh, bank account attacks are done by logging in with your account number you can log in with your account number then that account number is sending you an otp through the use of text messages or call there kind there are two kinds of otps either by call or either by text messages the text message one we all know that we have heard these warnings many times that otp should not be shared with anyone the phone call one never ever enable phone call otps instead of and the, there is a threat where many attack times attackers can come to your phone like they will enable some kind of social engineering that they will say that i need your help can i call someone it is an emergency my parent and such is in a hospital and such and what they will do is they will take your phone and call some number instead of calling a number what they will do is they will enable some kind of setting in your phone number phone that will forward all of your con incoming calls to his phone number so that whenever you are you can say incoming otp calls will be going to your phone instead of coming to your phone that incoming otp call will go to his phone number and that way he can find out the otp to logging in your account that is how the bank attacks are hacking hacked by just a phone call you can say but other anything else i don't think that with the help of just what are the setting in our phone it is called call forwarding and it can be done by just dialing a certain number like star the certain number star and the forwarding number like uh, if i show you right now one second i will tell you uh, i have to find out a number it is uh, the setting is, and the technology the concept is called 
call forwarding. He sets up call forwarding inside your phone number to forward all the calls that are coming into your phone to the his number. Yes, we can do star 401 star and then type in your number to set up call forwarding. You can do it in your, you can say with phones. That is the technique that they use. If password diary lost, then how to recover the password someone asked. So see, in that case, it is like uh, forgetting your door keys, right? Do not ever lose your password. No, there is no way to recover the passwords for your accounts or your uh, computer systems password, your app lock passwords. It is just like you are locking your door outside your home and then forgetting where the key is kept and throwing the key, lo losing the key to your own home. Right. So, so make sure it is not. Okay, so how to check our mobile is not hacked. There is no notifications such as that to uh, find out if our mobile phone or device is hacked hacked or not there is no notifications available currently right now for general public so yes that is a challenge that we are facing but we will soon find out the solution is sim swapping cloning possible only giving anybody a phone call no amit gupta is not possible by just giving anybody a phone call swim swapping or phone cloning is not possible just by a phone number phone call it is not Yes, it is possible, uh, Pari, that uh, just by uh, editing our SMS service center number, our OTPs can be uh, accessible by any other attacker as well. Okay, that is possible. So, uh, I think these are the questions that will take a lot of our time because, yes, these are very interesting questions. And, yes, we are uh, nearing the end of our time right now it is already 7 or 3 so i wish yes everyone best of luck and i will take this last question from sri raj is scanning mobile on regular basis help safeguard yes you can implement anti malware services on your mobile phone as well you can download them from your play store and you can scan your mobiles from malware and such it is a very good safeguard procedure okay with that last question uh I am going to, you can say, end this session today and we will continue on in the next masterclass with the next chapter and finishing of how to protect our organizational data and the certification procedure of them. Okay. So thanks a lot, Mr. Karthik, and uh, for a wonderful session. And thanks to everyone for attending to it. So I think Anjana has left out for other meeting. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Okay, sir. Okay. Thank you. Thank you.